My name is Chris and today we are looking at isolation speaker stands. Welcome to the Vinyl Attack. Attack! Today's show is sponsored by Into the AM. If you've been watching the show for any length of time, it's probably apparent that I am a t-shirt junkie. So when Into the AM contacted me about supporting the show by sponsoring a video, I was certainly intrigued. If you haven't heard of Into the AM, they're a team of artists and creators with a strong catalog of unique and compelling logo designs printed on incredibly soft and high quality t-shirts. I'm quite particular about the people with whom I associate when it comes to sponsoring this show, but Into the AM were quick to put their money where their mouth is, so to speak. They sent me four sample shirts to try out, and believe me when I say that I have no hesitation in recommending them to you. I like the fit, I like the comfort, and I like the bold, colorful designs that I chose, along with the many other graphic and non-graphic shirt options available. If you're looking for a quality, comfortable t-shirt that not only looks great but feels great and you'd like to support this show, you can take advantage of Into the AM's three graphic t-shirt bundle for $60 bucks, or three of their basic tees for $49.95. In addition, when you click on the link in the description below, you can receive an additional 10% off of your purchase. I look forward to picking up some more of these excellent shirts in the future, and thanks to Into the AM for making it possible. When I attended Expona back in April of this year, I eventually found myself wandering into the Focal exhibitor room because, well, why wouldn't I? They had a myriad of speakers, amps, and other items on display, both in use and just for show, but it was a much smaller product that caught my eye this time around. While I've seen and heard a great deal about the isoacoustic product line over the last couple of years, I've never had the opportunity to use any of them myself. So, upon entering the Focal display, I was intrigued to see that isoacoustics had not only their product line available, but a side-by-side -side comparison set up as well. If you're not familiar with isoacoustics, they produce a wide variety of award-winning and patented isolation feet for almost any speaker you might have in your possession, along with a host of other products. And while that catalog might be impressive, you may also be asking, what can that do for me and why do I care? Fair questions. So let's take a brief look at how the isoacoustics isolation feet work and what they're purported to do. In a nutshell, the isolation feet aim to manage the energy of a speaker by reducing vibrations that resonate throughout the cabinet. By doing so, this helps to eliminate dissonant sounds and internal reflections and vibrations reflecting back up through the speaker cabinet, which can cause smear. Smear in this case meaning that errant noises that jam up the middle of the frequencies causing less clarity in the stereo image. Picture this. You have a pair of speakers on a desk or table, and between them a turntable. You're probably very well aware that by playing the music too loud, the turntable, and stylus in particular, are going to pick up errant vibrations and sound waves causing an absolute mess in the sound reproduction. The speakers themselves can experience a similar, albeit less intense, phenomenon by simply placing them on a hard, flat surface. Vibrations can travel from the speaker cabinets to the hard surface and then back up to the cabinets, causing minor distortions. Using a blueprint diagram that makes very little sense to me because I'm not an engineer, isoacoustics tout that the shape, thickness, durometer, and characteristics of their proprietary isolation material function together with the internal insert to manage vibrations. If all of that makes sense to you, fantastic. For the rest of us, it essentially means that the isolation feet keep unwanted vibrations from traveling back through the cabinet of the speaker because of the multiple components in each foot or stand. This in turn isolates the speaker in essence, allowing you to hear a more accurate representation of what the speaker can do. Okay, that sounds pretty good, but just what kind of improvements can you expect to hear? Well, isoacoustics will tell you that you can experience tighter bass, an improved sound stage, greater sound clarity and openness, and a more three-dimensional image of natural spatial sound, what the rest of us might simply call soundstage. That sounds good to me, but do they actually do what they claim? That's the entire point of this video, but I had mentioned a direct comparison display in the showroom, hadn't I? Indeed. There were two pair of Focal floor standing speakers, whose specific model name escapes me at the moment, placed approximately six feet apart and facing straight ahead as I recall. One pair on a set of isoacoustics isolation feet, and the other pair on their stock feet placed directly upon the floor. Using an AB box, you could then switch from one set of speakers to another, making it easier to discern the differences on demand. Your first thought might be, as mine was, that the difference in height of the two sets of speakers was the difference that I was hearing and not the effect of the isolation feet. I inquired about that as well, and the salesperson, or exhibitor, or whatever title might be most appropriate here, assured me that this was not the case. I tried to shift up and down in my seat to accommodate for this height difference, and I was still able to hear an audible difference between the two sets of speakers, but that's not what I would call a definitive result. All the same, I was indeed hearing a difference, but what kind exactly? 
At the show, it was hard to tell. If you've ever been to a hi-fi event or any loud room in general, you can imagine how difficult it is to pinpoint sonic accuracy. Certainly, I was hearing a brighter top end and a more lively mid-range, but the Focal speakers were a little forward in the presentation in the first place, right? So, was this a good thing? The only way to find out for sure was to take a pair home and give them a listen. Not wanting to dive headfirst in their pricier feet packages that would benefit my Bowers & Wilkins floor standing speakers, I opted instead to go with a more affordable route and pick up a set of their Aperta series. They have three models in this line, the Standard, the 200, and the 300, targeted at bookshelf and standout speakers of different sizes. With the show sale special going on, I was able to take home a pair that would normally be priced at about 200 bucks for around 160. I figured if I wasn't happy with them, I could always unload them on the aftermarket. As you can see though, I still have them, but we'll get to that. When I got home, I must admit that I was pretty eager to get the isolation stands out of the box and underneath some speakers. But before I did any comparative listening, I needed to find a way to make sure that I could adjust my seat height accordingly to match the height difference of the isolators versus not having them. After fiddling about with an office chair to very little success, I opted for finding a few old books stacked to just the right height. Not the most scientific method, but at least it was consistent, if not a tad dangerous. Upon first listen, I was once again greeted with a more crisp top end, but this time I was able to discern subtleties and nuances in the quiet of my own home. The first thing that came to mind when hearing the difference in tones was an old signal processor we used in the recording studio called the BBE Sonic Maximizer. The Sonic Maximizer is an analog signal processor that takes a signal, in my case a guitar amp, and adds a clarifying tone and fullness to it. Many of us just called it a sound exciter back in the day. The Aperta managed to elicit a similar characteristic by simply being placed underneath the speaker. There was no processing of any kind going on here, and that A-B comparison I'd heard certainly wasn't smoke and mirrors. After spending some time with the Apertas, I started to hear more and more in the way of sonic differences over time. Top end and clarity weren't the only characteristics making themselves present when the speakers were placed upon the isolation stands. I did indeed hear tighter bass and an improved soundstage, although the greater clarity was certainly the easiest to make out. Cymbals had a bit more sparkle, kick drums had a little more punch and definition, but vocals are where these stands really seem to make a difference for me. Male and female vocals alike just had a better overall presence. Now, keep in mind that we're not talking about life-altering differences or improvements, but for the money I spent, I was very happy with the results I was hearing. I wanted to make sure that this wasn't a fluke though, so I started to try different stand mount speakers I had in the house to see if I could replicate similar results. From the Bucart S400 Mark IIs, to the Triangle Borea Bro 3s, to the Golden Ear BRX Reference X speakers that came along later, review forthcoming, the ISO Acoustics Apertas brought out a noticeable change in each model. Was this a good change? In my experience, it was, with every pair of speakers I used. But not being satisfied without making sure that I had tried every possible setup with the Apertas, I started to play around with the angle of the speakers as well. The Apertas have an adjustable tilt of up to 6.5 degrees, so you can dial them into your individual taste. If you're looking for even more top end or a brighter presence, you may choose to angle the speakers up a little. If just a bit of clarity and a subtle nod of the low end, while improving the soundstage is more of your preference, you may choose to leave them as they are out of the box. While I enjoyed a slight tilt on more of the flat-facing style of speakers, such as the Triangles and the Golden Ears, I did find that keeping the stands flat worked best with the Bucarts. Not a big surprise considering that Maz designed his speakers to perform with the inherent tilt they already possess. Either way, I found it a nice option to have. So that's it then. It's a one-trick pony. Yeah, pretty much. But it's a nice trick, or rather a nice function, as this is indeed quality engineering that is producing an improved sound from your system. Did I find any caveats? Only one that I could think of, and it's going to be completely subjective. The shape and the color. I am certain there are those of you out there who will not like the aesthetic design of this piece, and I certainly wish I would have been handed the black stands I asked for and not the silver I discovered when I got home. But that said, the sonic performance improvements far outweigh any negative feelings I might have toward the color. So you'll have to determine if you can live with these modern art looking sound enhancers for yourselves. If you're thinking about isolation feet as an improvement to your sound, I would recommend visiting the Isoacoustics website to find out which specific model will best fit your needs. Their individual feet are a direct replacement to the spikes or rubber feet on your floor standing speakers, while the different Aperta series are clearly meant for bookshelves and stand mount speakers. They're affordable, in my opinion, they're effective, and I think they'd be an excellent upgrade to even a modestly priced stereo system. In a day and age where it's getting harder to find nice accessories that do what they claim no matter what the price, it's nice to see that ISO Acoustics can deliver the goods without breaking the bank. Thanks to my patrons on Patreon who help make these videos possible. Thanks to you for stopping by to watch. 
and I look forward to next time.